la 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 I'm a banana, I'm a banana. Oh, it's recording. Oh, sorry. Welcome to another installment of the Sunday Video Update and returning to the video after two weeks of being absent, not by choice, but after two weeks of being absent. Joining me off camera is Dad and Amy. Howdy. Howdy. And Good to be back. It's great to have you back. Um, today is Sunday, October 4th, 2020. Welcome aboard. So glad you could join us for another installment of Sunday video. And I say join us because I'm not doing this solo like I have for the past couple of weeks. There's a lot to get to. Um, before I get to my own stuff, I'm going to ask you guys, how have you been? Because uh, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. How are Ran things down. going? Ran down. Ran down, yeah. Yeah, I bet. Um, they had other things I had to tend to, and that's why they've been absent from the Sunday video for the past couple weeks, and I've been flying solo. And But, you know, I, I, I kept the place, tried to keep it up, you, you know. You right, um, did. You did pretty good, Jerry. I mean, I, it, it, I, I was... I managed to cook myself some food and didn't burn the house to the fucking ground, so I guess that matters. <laughs> no, I didn't make any grilled cheese sandwiches, and all the two weeks, that, or, or all the time I had to myself, I didn't make any grilled cheese sandwiches. Well, darn it. I prepared mashed potatoes and chicken, and yeah. um, I think I, I made some uh, fettuccine Alfredo, and I had... Uh, creamy chicken and biscuits that we usually make the banquet creamy chicken, right. but the house didn't burn to the ground, so I must have done something right. We ate whatever <coughs> Dad made for lunch and dinner. And um, breakfast. We both made breakfast. So you guys have been really busy. I had actually a pretty good week. Um, yesterday was my mom's birthday, yeah, and was my mom's birthday. Yesterday was her adopted mom's birthday. I went and spent time with my mom. I uh, drove up to where she lives at now. Uh, she lives up on the other side of Wademan, Michigan. She actually, if you guys are fans of um, a TV show called The Incredible Dr. Pole, my mom doesn't live too far from there. Um, that's where I was at last night. I was up at my mom's, and I took her out to a nice meal, and it was a wonderful day. We, we were actually on the phone until like 3 o'clock this morning. Yeah, I'm, we were talking on the phone, and I didn't get to bed until about three thirty, four o'clock this morning. Um, but and this is what's weird. This is going to blow your mind. <clears throat> Yesterday was my mom's birthday. Now my dad here, he was born in nineteen fifty eight, and he's sixty two years old. My mom was born in nineteen sixty two, and she turned fifty eight years old yesterday. <laughs> Um, so, because I was thinking about that, and it's like, that that is just too weird. It's too strange. Um, but I pointed that out to Dad and Mom yesterday, and and Mom's like, that is weird, because she, she didn't think of that and when I pointed it out. But, yeah, it was a wonderful day yesterday. I had a lot of fun. We went to this uh, restaurant called Birchwood. It's on uh, M115, if you're familiar with Farwell, Michigan. Um we used to go by there when, yeah. when we went up to Herba Maxine's all the time. I think, and I think that's <clears> your mom did that later, $100 tip. Yeah. Um, the, the, the supermarket next door to yeah, yeah. Birchwood Carroll's, the supermarket where we used to go to get hot dogs and pop and yeah, chips Carol's, and things, yeah. it's right next to that. Mm -hmm. the, the restaurant, Birchwood, is right next to Carroll's. Yeah. And I told my mom, I said, I haven't been up here in, in quite a long time. Yeah. I don't make it to Claire or, or Farwell or, or whatever, but it was it was a pretty good day yesterday. Um, she she ordered a farm a farmer's omelet. <clears throat> I had a um, a bacon and cheese, um, a, or no, I'm sorry, it was a a bacon cheeseburger, a bacon cheeseburger. That's what it was, and fries. And Kevin, he had the same thing. Um, and, and I ordered some appetizers. They're called mac and cheese bites. Oh, my goodness. Those were good. They had a little bit of a tang to them, like a little bit of a kick, but they were good. Yeah, they were. it was it was a great day yesterday. We watched a, an old movie called Rosemary's Baby. Uh, it's got Mia Farrow in it, and uh, it, it's from 1968. And uh, it, I, I watched it, and I'm thinking, damn, this is, you guys really had your thrillers back in the day. 
Like, you really had your scary movies, and <clears throat> Mom says, well, it's kind of, it's back then, it's what they call bubblegum thrillers. Like, you, you could instantly spot how fake it is. Of course, it's all fake. But they made it so obvious that it's fake. To where now And, is. yeah. And I told Mom, I said, well, isn't it? Oh, I asked her, so well, isn't it all fake? She said, well, yeah, of course it's all fake. She says, but with the bubblegum thriller, back then, that's what they called them. They just made them obviously, you know, they, they didn't try to, <clears throat> you know, they didn't try to make it realistic. They, they they just put it out there that this is fake, you know. But it was a good movie. I I if you haven't seen Rosemary's Baby, I'll just tell you that um it stars Mia Farrow. Her character is Rosemary Woodhouse and she is impregnated by the devil and she gives birth to the antichrist, I I guess is what you would call it. It's it's kind of a it's a scary movie, but I, I kind of chuckled a few times, you know. Oh, Dad's allergic to. It, no, he's not allergic. To it. It's it's the change of the weather. We've been having up and down, fluctuating temperatures here in Michigan all week. Um. <clears throat> I, I yeah, but I had I had quite a an awesome week. Um. If my buddy Reese is watching, hello, Reese. Um, I went to see him and, and his mom and his baby sister, Lily. And I went to uh, I visit with my buddy, Jake. Uh, I've known him 30 years, m most of my life. Uh, I visited with him and his two kids for a little bit. I talked to, um, just, I just saw a whole bunch of people last week. My, I went to my cousin Matt's house and visited with him and his wife and kids for a little while and... Um, I went to Saginaw. I went to my brother Wayne's house and visited with him for a little while. I've been on the go. I've been to Browner's. I've been to, uh, <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. Um, I, I, um, I got to see, well, that was two weeks ago. I got to see my buddy and, and his mom. That's why I started singing I'm a Banana because, um, I went to visit a little, cancer survivor he's only seven years old i visited with him a couple of weeks ago and he started singing i'm a banana i'm a banana i don't he doesn't see these videos but um i, I it's stuck in my head now but anyway I'm, my week's been great um i've been chatting with with my friends and text messages and emails and we've been keeping in touch and i'm just doing the best i can trying to stay sane if you will because uh, people have a, a funny way of uh, driving you nuts. But anyway, you guys have been gone for the past couple Sundays. And I wanted to turn the floor over to you. If there was anything you would like to talk about. Dad's too busy hacking his brains out over here, so you don't have anything to talk well, about. For two weeks, I was with my adopted mom. Mm. Turned out pretty good. She wasn't really too bad for us. Uh huh. Yeah. And then when my brother and his wife showed back up, oh, hell chaos hell. broke loose. Hell broke. You can say how. Okay. <laughs> I say worse, you know, like the word fuck, but you, you can say how. And then uh, <coughs> yesterday was her birthday. Mm hmm. And. <laughs> We all, had a good time. we all had a good time. Even mom, she had some cries and she had some laughs and took her to the cemetery. We yep. and uh, we started saying happy birthday to her, Jerry, and she started crying. And Aww. then Joe come out and says to her, "You know what? Dad was even singing happy birthday yep. to you, uh, and that's where she started getting teary eyed." Yeah, and he said, and then mom. I could just hear Dan, what are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Yeah. But laughing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we told her we were taking her to the nursing home. Yeah. In uh, Ovid. <laughs> which you don't like, because that's the worst one to go to. Yeah, in Ovid? Yeah, uh, they almost killed my dad. That's what Gail oh. was. No, oh. that's who? Gail. Uncle Mark. Oh, Gail. Oh. Was there too, and Mark didn't like it. Like they, uh, they just don't take pride they don't stand behind their work they don't take pride no. in what they do uh -uh. you know well they're just old and frail and they're gonna they die anyway Ash, Ashley. 
Yeah. If nobody knows how it's right to take care of a person with dementia and Alzheimer's and being a diabetic, it is hard work. Yes. It is very hard. Now I understand people that that do have <coughs> loved ones that has dementia and Alzheimer's and that. And like I keep it telling. Is, it is hard to take care of them because you got to be on your toes 24-7. Like to I, watch them and listen to them and like I keep telling my girlfriend from Texas, she uh, <coughs> works in a nursing home, and I come right out and I told her, I says, you know what? I give you major credit because I did it for two weeks and I cannot. Mm -hmm. I, that's not a job for me. <coughs> well, good yeah, it's a lot of work. The mental abuse is what's the worst. Yeah, and, and if and if they hit you, you can't hit them back because right, right. you get in trouble. Yeah. You'll go to jail. And then one good thing out of it, my truck paid off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I got a TV off. for Jared out of the deal. Oh, a TV for me. Yeah, yeah that TV's yours. Oh. It's in the bedroom. Okay. I, <laughs> because Dad showed me. He says, yeah, look what look what we got, a new TV. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was mine. Yep. Yeah, it's yours to go up here. here. Oh, okay. So I can have mine back. Oh, Okay. <laughs> um, but when they came, well, they came home, what was it on Thursday? You guys came back home on Thursday, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, did Joel come home Wednesday? 30th. The 30th? Is when we came home. So. Oh, it was the first. Oh, yeah. The Thursday. Yeah, the Thursday. Thursday. <clears throat> yeah, because it was, it was Chuck Day. Yeah. And when they came home. Dad's like, oh, my couch. I got my couch back. And he he was really happy. Oh, man. He was relieved. Um, I was, you know, I'm happy to have Dad and Amy back. It was kind of getting a little difficult, you know, when I'm doing the Sunday video. Like, I take care of what I need to take care of. I take the trash out. I did the dishes and mm -hmm. taking care of things around the house. Not like you can tell. But um, even doing the Sunday video updates, it's like, well, what the fuck do I talk about? What do I, you know, because I usually have extra people to, to talk to or, or to converse with. And now that you guys weren't here for those couple of Sundays, it's like, I'm totally stumped. I don't know what the fuck to talk about. Um, they were some short videos, huh? Well, the one was actually over an hour okay. because I just rambled and ranted and rambled and ranted. But it's it's just reiterating and rehashing shit that I've talked about over and over again. And speaking of child of cancer, um, I want to say hello to my dear friend Shania, watching from uh, the East Coast. I don't want to give give the name of the state away, but Shania, if you're watching, I love you. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're smiling. I want to do that special video shout out for her. Yep. Um, and you have uh, you have something special coming to you in the mail, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know for a fact that I have over 250 subscribers to this channel. And uh, all 250 subscribers, whether you love me or hate me, I hope you're doing well. Um, <clears throat> that's just the kind of guy I am. Uh, but all in all, like I said, it was a great week. I, you know, I, I visited with friends and I've been texting people. You know, here and there, every so often, visiting people. and I got you a tire for your van? Yeah, I got a new tire for my van. See, look, me and Dad, we took my mom yeah. to um, Uncle Danny and Elaine's. Mm -hmm. Sat there, and Mom and Elaine sat and talked. I bet. Because Elaine had dealt with, you know, family that was were... Dad. Yeah, Lloyd, yeah. You know. Lloyd had so dementia real bad. She, she gave Alzheimer's. me a break, you know. <coughs> yeah. And then we um, also took her up to Uncle Tim's, and she got to meet Damien. Oh. And Lexi. And Lexi. And Lexi yeah. had a little kitten. <laughs> and, oh, she gave that little kitten. Well, Heidi and Howard was at Matt's? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And uh, Lexi ended up giving this little kitten to my mom, and my mom fell in love with this kitten. Then she took the kitten away, and then she brought the kitten back, you know, and Mom just had a great time sitting there talking with Barb and everything, and mm -hmm. pretty Joel. much giving me, a, me and Dad a break. Call me Joe and call her Tammy. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then when Joe and Tammy got home, Tammy was Amy, and Joe was Wayne, and 
Then she couldn't remember. He walked in the door and she kind of looked at him and said, What? Joe. Yeah. Okay. I remember. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah, so you, they surprised the mom when they came in. Yeah. We didn't tell her that they were coming. That light flickers a lot. It's hard to take care of a person that's a diabetic or like that. When yeah. Insulin and well, you you saw what Uncle Tim had to do for Aunt Rhonda because she was a diabetic. And, but, <clears throat> yeah. but <clears throat> no, Aunt Rhonda didn't have oh, man, that's, that's Alzheimer's dementia. Or, but, however, yeah. Uncle Tim, I hate to say it, Uncle Tim, you were giving her Pepsi. <clears throat> Shouldn't have gave her Pepsi, but she she was fighting tooth and nail. She wanted her Pepsi, and she wanted it. Okay, you know, whatever. No. He tried um, to make her happy. Joe. Yeah, he tried they, to make her happy, but they can have caffeine for uh, or like root, regular root beer. Yeah, they can have diet pops. <clears throat> yeah. My mom mainly but there's water with even though it's diet, there's still caffeine in yeah, it. Yeah. There's caffeine and even caffeine free. Yeah, there's still there's the, still a little. The, the only sugar. thing is, yeah. you know how you and I could have a tall glass of it, like regular Pepsi, like yeah. I do. I can drink Pepsi all day long. Yeah. Now her, she only gets maybe two yeah. thirds of a glass of pop. Yeah. Every so often. I um, I was t um talking to my cousin destiny not there's two there's i have two cousins named destiny one is my anna's daughter and the other one's my cousin david's daughter there's a lot of david's on my mom's side of the family too that's another story for another day but i was just talking to my cousin destiny we call her bug eater that's because she ate a bug when she was a kid um when she was younger and we've been texting one another and um you know i told her i said i might I might see you soon, you know, and I don't I, I, I don't see that side of the family that much, you know. I'd, I'd like to see him again. But, yeah, it was, it was um, yesterday was great. You know, I took Mom to uh, Birchwood to get some grub, to get something to eat. And then today is my biological father's birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, October the 4th. Yeah, he took her out to eat, and... Uh, Sat with her and watched Rosemary's Baby, an old movie. And I Know What You Did Last Summer came on. And that movie's so fucking stupid. I heard you even took a cat nap up there. Yeah, well, we were wa we were watching that movie, Rosemary's Baby, and the heater, they had like a fo little floor heater, and it was, you know, aimed at me, and I'm sitting on the couch like this. I had a full stomach, full of food. And then eventually I'm just... And then mom spoke up and said something, and I kind of jerked and jumped. She said, I didn't mean to wake you. I said, I didn't mean to fall asleep. I said, you know, I, it's just I, I had a full stomach, and and I was I was relaxed, you know. Comfortable. Yeah, I was comfortable. Then, then mom fell asleep. That's when I called dad. And then mom woke up because she heard my voice. And... uh it, it was a good day. It was I, funny, though, when you pulled in the drive seat, you said. Yeah, she, she wasn't expecting me to come up there um, because she had company prior to me showing up, and I think I followed Kevin in the driveway. He was probably in front of me the whole time. I just didn't even recognize that I didn't. Because I, I, I don't pay attention to vehicles. I don't right, know right. always know what everybody drives. So, he like, he just pulled. I guess he just pulled in, and then I pulled him behind him. I didn't even see him. I didn't even notice. I wasn't right. paying attention, but. Um, she says, that looks like my kid. And then I pull in and she says, that is Jared. So I wasn't expecting him to come up here. Well, mom, it's your birthday, you know? And I went by myself and, um, some people were a little upset by that because I didn't take them with me. Oh, well, you know, um, huh? Yeah, yeah. Talk for like maybe five minutes, good. That was good. for like five minutes. But yeah, some people got a little upset because I didn't take them along. We didn't even know you were going. I got I got in the tub. I I I took a bath, got dressed, and said I'm out of here. Yeah. Bye. Didn't know where he was. Going. I, yeah, Dad didn't know. Hey, 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 hey. Dad didn't know where I was going. And I just said, I'll see you later. 
mom didn't even know I was coming up, so it was a surprise for everyone. But, oh well. The people who got mad because I didn't take them, get you know, you just have to get over it. You know, and it's, it's, there, there's nothing, see that, but that's, that's what I, I, I kind of really don't understand, that stupid light, is that y'all, y'all have vehicles too, y'all have GPS devices, y'all know how to get anywhere else, why can't you just go, just up and leave? I mean, what, what's the excuse? Well, Jared, you're, you're the only one who knows how to get there. No, I'm not the only one who knows how to get there. If you look at a fucking map, you would know. If you have a GPS, you would know. Yeah, it's not address, hard. You put your address in it. Yeah, and, and then, then put, you put her address yeah. in your... But if they don't know the address, then I guess they wouldn't know. But that's why you have to pay attention. Like when, the times when you did ride with me up there or the times that you drove and I had to tell you how to get there, you got to pay attention to the road signs. You got to pay attention to road names. There's a reason that they name roads so you don't get lost. So you say, oh, you got to go a couple of intersections, like, turn right, turn left, turn No, this is the name of the road. No. You take it all the way. Roads made me maps where I drive up. Yeah. That one time I... Yeah. Yeah, road. that was all the way to... Munith. Munith. Down by Jackson. The thing is, my mom lives. My mom lives on the other side of Mount Pleasant, about 15 miles or so, on the other side of Mount Pleasant. If you don't know how to get to Mount Pleasant, and Mount Pleasant is not a hard place to find. If you don't know how to find Mount Pleasant, <laughs> then you know what? Then just stay home. If you don't know how to find Mount Pleasant. My sister lives in Wademan, last I knew. And. Wait, and Wademan is just a little, little rinky-dink town. I mean, you, you pass through it, you blink your eye. Well, where'd it go? Yep. Just like Brant. I mean, well, Brant's a lot smaller than Wademan, but. Brant uh, of a bar, of a store. And there used to be a post office in Brant, but I don't know. I guess now it's just a drop box. You're, they they that, used to have a gas station there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Ma said. There was a. There was a, a, a gas station there years ago. But, you know, and I'm not trying to be a hard ass, but listen, you know, if you've been there numerous times and, you know, I mean, you should know by now, you can find your way anywhere else around. I mean, how, you know, how is that any different? But anyway, enough of that. Uh, I had a wonderful day yesterday and the week was pretty good. Like I said, I visited with lots of friends and. People were happy to see me. They were coming up, giving me hugs, and um, I mean, even my little cousins. You know, I went up to Matt, Matt and Melissa's, my cousin's house up there in Chesnang, and and little Sammy. He's only four years old. Every time I go up there, he gets so excited when I come through the door. When he recognizes who it is, like he'll be watching his um, what do you call that? A tablet, I think, or just a regular cell phone. He'll be watch. He'll be watching cartoons. And he won't see me come walk to the door, and I'll take my hat off, and I'll kind of put it in front of his eyes. And he'll look up, and he'll, hey, Jared, you know, and then he'll go back to, or he'll come up and give me a hug. You know, you don't see him wearing that hat you gave I know. That's all right. That's all right. He just wanted to, he, he thought it was cool that I was wearing a hat and sunglasses, or the other kids got a hold of it and broke it or did something with it, or who knows. Yeah, but either way, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Either way, he just, because I showed up one day wearing a, a Spartan hat. In fact, I think it's down here. Nope, that's my shamrock hat. Anyway, I have a Michigan State Spartans hat. And I showed up at Matt's one day, and, and Sammy was there, and he noticed it. He says, I want your hat. I said, you can't have this hat. I said, this is my Sparty hat. But I want it, you know, and you know how four-year-olds are. I said, well, I, let me see what I can do. I will get you your own hat, okay? Yeah, and he got really excited. Okay, so I went and bought him a hat, and he wanted my he wanted my glasses. He wanted, he doesn't realize or, or at least understand that these are prescription glasses. And I tried to explain, but, you know, you can't explain to a four-year-old. He doesn't understand. 
I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, you can't have my, my, my regular seeing eyeglasses. I said, but what I can do, I said, I can get you a pair of really cool shades. I can get you a really cool pair of sunglasses. And he says, he says, I like sunglasses. I said, well, good. I said, I'll buy you a pair of sunglasses. And I asked him, I said, do you want red or green or blue or what, what color? He wanted green. So I got him bright green neon sunglasses and his own Sparty hat. I took a picture of him, and he, he looked really rad. <laughs> you know, rad. That, that's, that's, a, that's a buzzword now. It's like, yeah, did you, have you noticed that? The word rad is like a buzzword now. It's like, what the f- Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's gnarly, gnarly you know, dude. like the 60s all over again. It's far out. It's gnarly. It's groovy. Now it's rad. Yep. Give me a fucking break. What's but, it going to be next year? Oh, it's, it's true like glue. That's probably going to be some stupid little catchphrase. You know, eh, whatever. But anyway, Sammy liked his uh, hat and sunglasses I got for him, and that's been quite a while now um i don't know what my plans are for this week i don't know what i'm doing today in fact um because it's sunday who knows the possibilities are endless you maybe hmm. yeah, got his hunting license. oh yeah dad got his doe tags uh, I yeah i get it too <laughs> um like what? Ten of them? Ten of them. <laughs> they're off or down here. Yeah, they're off or. But I can get one for up there. Yeah. But I don't know if I want to go put it up there today. You. Right. Wait and go out. Well, there. wait. Make up your mind. You said you might oh. go up there. And then, oh, I don't know if I want to go up there today. I'm gonna go hunt out here tonight, Jerry. I don't think he really knows. Jerry. I don't know either. He, 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 need, he needs. Coffee. He needs I more coffee. Right now. Yeah, he does. As soon as I'm done with mine, I'll he needs there. more coffee. I know. I do. I'm just but we had a lot of good laughs yesterday. Yeah. Mom cried a little. Well, you know, my mom is the last of, of all her brothers and sisters. My grandma had, yeah, my grandma had lots of kids. And, um, yeah, my Uncle Bill, she, he was married to my mom's sister, Kathy. I always call her Muff. That's always been her nickname is Muff. Um, <clears throat> But all my mom's brothers and sisters are gone. They passed away. My mom is the last surviving out of all my grandma's kids. And so now all my cousins, which would be her nieces and nephews, are all turning to her. A lot of them are upset with my mom. I don't know why. You know. Um, because she won't let them stay at her house. Yeah, that, well, that's part of And actually, I do know why. And that's one of the reasons. And it's for stupid, other stupid reasons they they blame my mom because the the all my cousins are like fucked in the head. Well, how is that my mom's fault? Yeah. There's all kinds of nasty, disgusting, vile shit going on in the family on my mom's side. And I yeah, we're, we won't get into the specifics, but just understand that I disown them. Um. Yeah, and I I disown them, and I I want nothing to do with them. Now, there's some cousins that I will talk to because they're sensible, they're reasonable, yeah. but a good bulk of them, they can stay far the fuck away. Like, I don't care if I ever see them again. Like Timmy. Bible. He's good. He's not my cousin. No, but he's with Sheila. I said on mom's side of the family, dad, not just... Well, ain't, ain't he related to No, mom? no, oh, okay. no, Timmy Sable's not related to mom. Oh, okay. No, because... Yeah, I understand, no. No, mom, he's no relation to mom. We're not, I'm not related to all the, thank God. Yeah. I'm not related to all the Sobbles. I don't even like to admit that I'm related to even a few Sobbles. We're related to ba- ba- Maxine, probably that kid. I'm not related to Maxine Sobble. I love them guys. I'm not related to them, though. Oh, I know that, but I'm saying, though. Madeline, know. I love, I love I Maddie. Sobbles we do like. Yeah, I, there's a, there's a lot of sabbles like David Leon. You know, I I talked to him. Oh, yeah. I was right. I was um, these are people that if you're not local, you don't know these people. But I was up at Express Stop and I was airing up my tire and David Leon was up there and he asked how you were doing, asked yeah. how I've been doing, and 
well, we're hanging in there, Dave, you know, just, just trying to take it easy and one day at a time. And he says, I hear you, brother, I hear you. And, you know, I I haven't seen David Leon in quite a long time. Boy, he's gotten big. <laughs> yeah, Ryan. I think his name is Ryan. I think so. And Courtney. Yeah. Ryan and boy, Courtney. Big. Yeah. But they're, they're, I don't want to trash on the Sable family because there's a lot of Fullers who aren't the brightest yeah. either. Um, and there's a lot of Perkins and, you know, we, we could, we could do this all day long, but I, I don't want, I don't want to take personal jabs at, no. at families because of their last names. No. But, um, there, there's just a lot of family on my mom's side and even dad's side that I, I would just, I'm better off without seeing them, talking to them, associating with yeah. them. But I have a certain particular group of people that I like to talk to. And I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong to single out but some you people. Get either from other people either. But there, yeah, there's people I can actually talk to, and they actually want me around. They actually talk to them. You know, joke with them. they they love it when we're around, when when we're in their presence. Um, but uh, uh, what Dad was saying, just there's just a lot of disgusting, vile people, especially on my mom's side of the family. They are, and my mom. Even said yesterday, I I don't claim any of them, most of them. Nope. And I I told her I said I kind of feel bad about that in a way. I said because they're my family on your side, and she says never feel bad about that. No. But I I I disassociate myself with with those people. The bad crowd. Because they're they're just they're disgusting. They're just. Ugh. You puke. <laughs> y- y- yeah. I'm not going to get into detail. I'm not going to get specific. You guys would. Um, you know who you are. Yeah. There. Well, those people who are local know who they are, but I'm talking to the people yeah. in generally speaking to my viewers. Um, you wouldn't want to run into these people. They're they're just, they're disgusting, vile people. You you, you don't want to meet them. Um, but they, they're here in Michigan, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, go back to the zoo. <laughs> yeah, go back to the zoo. But um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I I don't know what I'm doing this week. I don't know what my plans are for today. Um, in fact, I'm gonna. While well, I'm sitting here, I'm going to. I've been here for over a half hour already. I'm going to check my email. I doubt if I have any email. I never do. No one ever talks to me come on come on come on load please load please nope my inbox is empty I'm not popular needed or wanted today oh well which could be a good thing yeah. nope this folder is empty well lottie fucking die well, that's okay. I, I've got lots of email addresses, lots of cell phone numbers. But I don't want this to turn into a habit to where, well, we'll get a hold of Jared because he's we he's very giving. He's very generous, and, and we, we know we can get something from him, so we'll contact him. I don't want it to turn into that. Um, I have lots of friends. I have lots of connections. A lot of people know who I am. And just as I pointed out, I think it was last week or the week before in my Sunday video, I'm known by lots and lots and lots of people, especially from around Chesning. A lot of people know who I am. They know Dad, and they know that I'm his son. And and uh, like a lot of people ask me, are you Jay's brother? And I said, I am. And I said, well, you act nothing like Jay. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'll take that as a compliment, you know. Um my brother and I, yes, we are totally two different people. Um, we're like night and day to each other, but I love my brothers. I, I, and they have your back every day. And, and speaking of brother, I, I saw my brother Wayne, my oldest brother Wayne, uh, in Saginaw, because that's where he lives. I went and visited with him for a little while last week, and um, it was it was a good visit. You know, I haven't been to Saginaw in, in quite some time. I, I, I put in an order over at Bronner's, and I had uh, some Christmas bulbs personalized and shipped out. Uh, and then I, from Frankamuth, I went to 
I went through Bridgeport, buzzed up into Saginaw, figured I'd stop in and see what my brother Wayne was up to and chilled with him for a few minutes and it was nice, you know, it was it was nice to see my brother. <clears throat> Jay and I, I mean, we, we were still not speaking. I guess he's still upset with me because um, of the incident from uh, a couple weeks ago. I told him that, you know, I had things to do on that Friday, and I did. And I, I specifically told him and his girlfriend, I'm not going to be home on Friday. I have things to do. And then he showed up on Friday, and he says, well, why didn't you call me? And I said, call you. I told you I had things to do today. And he slammed the door, and... You know, one thing led to another. Uh, but after that, you know, I, 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 I'm I, not going to cancel my plans because, um, you know, because you weren't paying attention when I told you or, um, you know, it slipped your mind or whatever. I don't know. But I'm not going to cancel my plans because, you know, your, your girlfriend's kid had schoolwork to do on my computer. Uh, I had things to do, and Dad can verify that I had things to do. Why? Because I was broke down on the side of the freeway for yeah. two fucking hours in eighty degree heat. Yeah, I had to, tired. yeah. Well, the the tread was coming off yeah. of the yeah. the the beads were showing, and yeah. when I got out and I, I touched it, ooh, you know, it was really sharp, and I thought I drew I blood for a minute. Wires. Yeah, the wires were coming. I thought I drew blood for a minute. It didn't look like that when you left. No. No. Normal. Yeah. But I still went to see my buddy and, and his mom, the little seven-year-old leukemia survivor. Um, it, it, things have been good. Um, I don't have Messenger anymore. I got rid of all that stupid shit um, after receiving death threats. And that's, listen, that's not the reason. I, 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 I left, I got rid of all that, not because I was scared. And that's what most people like to imagine is because, oh, we scared him off or, oh, he, he went away, so it must be true the things that we're saying about. No, motherfucker, I got rid of it because I got sick of the drama. I got sick of the bullshit. I got sick of grown-ass people that's acting like high schoolers. And, that's, that's, and I thought bullying was illegal. On uh, I, online bullying is illegal. Yeah. So but why? But what do the cops do? Well, just block them. Mm -hmm. What do you mean just block them? So then what the fuck are the laws? If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna put teeth on them, well, yeah. just block them. Yeah, some cops. I thought so that that's that's just that that's a stupid law then. The, the, then that law does not apply. Yeah. I can bully anybody and get away with it then. But see, I'm not that kind of a guy. That's like that's like shooting a deer out of season because you were hungry, but yet you're gonna get fined for it if you tell me, "Well, my kids need to eat. I didn't have no food." Yeah. You know. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's crazy. But it's just, it's like, what the fuck is the point of having a law if you're not going to enforce them? Right. You know? It just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. And I can talk about some people on here, and they, they could misconstrue that as bullying. Oh, like Tom Mitchell, oh, Jared's bullying me, and he actually threatened me. He says, well, don't ever mention my name in any of your videos again. I just did again. So there's that. Um. You know, there's a difference between bullying and actually talking about something or someone just to say, I, I, I you know, I just think it's baloney what you're doing. But you didn't threaten him. I'm not, I don't threaten people. I don't threaten people. Um, unless, unless, if, if someone's coming at me in a threatening demeanor, then yeah, I'm going to say, look. You don't want to do that because if you do, you're going to make a lofty, lofty mistake and you're going to pay a lofty, lofty price. Okay, you know where I live. Yeah. I it. Yeah. I, I've, had, I've, I've had people threaten to come up in my yard and I've had pe uh, people threaten to even shoot up my house. Yeah, that'd be a worse mistake. And you don't want to do that. No, 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 no. I shoot, I aim. Yeah. Because when we shoot, we shoot to kill. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I don't shoot to wound. They're going to be down there when they come with the body bag. Yeah. Like I told um, them over on Road. I'm not a murderer, but I will defend myself at any and all costs. Uh, when I go walking down the road, I carry this, this little thing of pepper spray. So, so whoever's listening... Don't fuck with me when I'm out walking, because if you do, that'll be a big, big mistake. 
And that for some reason that light keeps flickering like it's. Yeah, if that light's ready to burn out. Yeah, I know it is. But I I don't want issues with people. But there's a lot of things that I you know like when I was on Facebook I would just. Facebook is a mosh pit, and I, I I was having a lot of, speaking of Facebook, I'm kind of glad I brought this up. I was having a lot of discussions uh, over this past week um, discussing Facebook and people who say, well, you know, I would leave Facebook, but I got so many connections. I talk to people, you know, I have family I don't see, blah, blah, blah. The, the typical excuses for staying on the bullshit website and I said, you know what? I said, if you can pick up a phone to get on social media, you can definitely pick up a phone to dial a fucking number or to text or to email. You can do these things. You don't need social media. Well, it's just easier. Social media made it easier to keep in touch with people. You know what? If, if the only way you can keep in touch with family is through a third party like that, if that's the only thing that keeps you going on, on these apps and these websites, yes, please. If that's the only thing that keeps you going, then have at it. You can stay in the most obnoxiously toxic environment that you see fit. I, there, there is, there, there should never be any reason to stay on Facebook. Social media is not fun. I don't care what anybody says. It's not fun. It's not fun. You know. And then you have these, you have all these, the, the, all these people who are look at me. You know, look what I did. Look, look who I am. You know, and and Tom Mitchell's one of them. He he does this shit all the time. You know. Um. He do, but he does that a lot, and that's what I point out, the hypocrisy. You know, you preach the gospel of kindness, but then you want to say that Trump is trash, and then you want to turn around, oh, well, you know, I, I, I heard he got COVID, and, 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 like, I'm really sorry. I hope I hope he gets better. You fucking hypocrite. Yeah. Don't preach kindness and then call Trump trash and then turn around, oh, by the way, I heard he's got COVID. I hope he gets better. <laughs> the fuck? Wow, and I'm the one with mental problems. Okay. Yeah, I'm the one with mental problems, but see, the thumbs and the hearts on posts, it's not something that I live by every day. I don't live on Facebook. The real world out there, that's where I live. That's where I live. There's a piece of hair right there. I can't grab it. Watch out, Carl. You got, oh boy. Piece of hair right by your thumb. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I don't see any here. Oh, now I do. Hut, 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 hut. I see the hair now. Enjoy a nice hair towel. Okay, where's. I need a towel. I don't know. Pat in, in the bathroom. Oh, here's one. I don't want to wipe it on my clothes. Well, too late. I wiped it on my pants a little bit. But, yeah. You know, Facebook is, is a toxic environment. People are always saying, well, Jared, I, I wish I could just get off the website, just turn my back on it, never say. You can. You can. If it inconveniences people, well, I don't know what happened to you. I don't hear from you anymore. Well, you know what? That's why prior to deleting your Facebook, you give people your contact information. You put it out there. Or you message people, say, if you really want to stay in touch this is how you're going to get in touch with me now because I am done with this Facebook bullshit. I am done with toxic social media. I'm done with people who are stupid and childish and petty. I am done. If you want to reach me, you know how to find me. And that's what I had to do. You know? And and that's just that's the way it is. You got to do you got to do what is best for you. And I, I got rid of all those apps off my phone. Um, I, I, I'm better for it. I'm, I'm better off not having social media. Um, my anxiety and my depression had gone way down. Because if you had noticed, I'm actually, I've been in a pretty good mood uh, the past couple of weeks. If, if you've noticed, um, I've, I've been doing okay. Like I've been in an upbeat, kind of happy-go-lucky mood. I haven't been as depressed. But the, the, there's a lot of reasons 
why I left social media, but and because there's a lot of things that used to upset me and annoy me about social media, and that is the fact that so many of my friends, and and I don't know if they watch my videos or if they don't, um, because as I said, my videos most likely get shared on on social media. But I had a lot of friends who would willingly give, like Tom Mitchell, they would give him all the attention, all the the accolades, all the you know the thumbs and the heart. And I'm I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know, what about me? When I say it, it's no big deal. But when he posts it, suddenly it, it, it's such a big deal to you guys. Like, what in the fuck? And I would, and it's not just Tom Mitchell. There would be other people that I, I would notice this. It's like, so what about me? You know, I've been friends with you guys this whole time, and when I write something, it's not profound to you anymore like it doesn't matter it do, like it doesn't resonate with you but when someone else says it oh you're all over it like a fly on shit so I, I got tired of inundating myself with useless garbage that means nothing I mean thumbs and hearts like really that that's what we're reduced to now um, and, and the problem too is that people conflate this with truth about themselves they think that their worth is contingent on the number of thumbs and hearts. And it's like, these are just popularity signals. What the fuck? You, you are worth so much more than, than you, you, th you're, 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 you're measuring yourself. You're using, you're using Facebook as a measuring stick to measure your own self-worth. And that's where you make a mistake. That's why you're so depressed. That's why you, you feel anxiety. That's why you feel as if you're never good enough. Because you're measuring your self-worth based on the likes and the shares and the hearts on Facebook, which is, means nothing at all. I scrapped all that shit out. I threw it out of my life. Most of my friends can contact me. They know how. It's up to them to do it. But I'm telling you, life is better without it. My, my quality of life had improved. I'm not... Yeah, you know, I'm not consciously aware of what other people are saying or doing. I, I don't have to go back and check my, my likes and hearts or whatever. I fell into that trap, okay? And that's what really fucked me up. Because I was I was taking all this in. And uh, that's where I made the mistake. I was taking all this in. It's like, well, people don't love me? Well, why am I not? I am a lovable person. I'm loved by many, many people. That's why everybody wants to see me all the time. I still have people who want me to come and, and hang out with them for a weekend or whatever. But that's, I, I got rid of Facebook. I got rid of Facebook because of the fact that it was, it was toxic. And I just couldn't, I, I couldn't deal with that anymore. You know, there's just, the, the, it's not a way that I want to live my life. It's not how I want to conduct my life. I'm not consciously aware of what other people are doing. My quality of life has improved. I've been doing a lot of writing. I've been doing a lot of driving around. I've been visiting with a lot of my friends, people who are happy to see me. They get excited every time I show up because they know, you know, the funny guy's here, Jer Bear's here, you know, and, and we love having him around. That, that feels good. That's where it's at. That's really and truly where it's at. I go to Bronner's enough time. The people get to know my name. They know, they recognize my face. Well, I guess my eyes because I wear a mask when I go into the public store. But now that when I go over to Bronner's, they know me. They know me by name. They say, "Hey, Jared, how you doing?" You know, and so that's nice. You can still venture out and see people. You know, um, but that, but that's the thing. I don't need Facebook. For that, I can still talk to people. I can text people. I can email people. I can, I can meet people. I can still venture out in public and see people I know, and they know me. And they always say hi. They never shy away from saying hello, and I never shy away from saying hello to them. So it's it's really um, it's better without Facebook. And I, I kind of went into a little spiel about Facebook, but it's it's better without it. And you're, like I said, you're not concerned about your friends who willingly give all their attention and all their time to people that, by the way, they never speak to or hear from ever. You know who you are. 
But yet when I want to talk to you, it's like, oh, I don't have time for this guy. Or, oh, I'm suddenly I'm, I'm too busy. It's like, what, whatever, you know, whatever. And there's a lot of people I've called out publicly, you know. And it got quiet with you guys. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're just <laughs> listening to me. Yep. Um, but I, at the end of the day, I, I, I still, I try to do the best I can for other people and for myself. You know, it's not, I'm not a narcissist. I don't make it all about me because it's not about me. The world doesn't revolve around me. Hey, Tom Mitchell, you could listen to what I'm saying, kind of take a few notes, buddy. The world does not revolve around you. It, it, it's not a, a, a two feathers world, you know, it, it's, it, that's, that's horseshit. It's just another way for you to make it all about you, 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 you at any and all costs. Well, it's not about you. And I can be man enough to say the world doesn't revolve around me. I'm not perfect. I've made lots of mistakes. I'm a fallible person. And you know what? I'm also someone who tries to make the world a better place, but I'm not going to do that by pretending as if it's always about me, like I'm some kind of a hotshot superstar. Because on Facebook, that's easy to do. That is easy to do. And you have enough gullible people kissing your ass, groveling at your feet. Oh, Tom, oh, you're so amazing. And, and the hearts, and oh, you're so amazing. I just love you. You're such a good human being, and blah, 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 blah. You got to be told by perfect fucking strangers that you're amazing? Come on, man. You're, you're, you're better than this. Come on. You know, and I was, believe it or not, you guys, believe it or not, just this past Thursday, I think it was, was the first, right? October the first. I was having this really awesome conversation with the lady at the post office. Her name is Sandy. Very sweet lady. I love Sandy to pieces. She, she and I were talking about Facebook. She never got involved on Facebook. She never, she says, I heard about it. She says, I never cared for it. I, I, I was never interested in social media. And I said, well, I said, it's not for everybody. And, you know, as it turns out, it's really not for me either. But anyway, she says, why is it that people, like, they do something, but they can't do something just for the sake of doing something for someone else? She point. says, they can't do a good deed without putting it on Facebook. Why can't you be your own person? Why, why do you have to be, you know, patted on the back for doing something? I said, thank you. Thank you. I said, so I'm not crazy after all? She says, no. She says, I never thought you were crazy. She says, why is it that people can't just be their own selves? Why can't you just go into the world, do what you think is necessary for the betterment of society or for the betterment of other people? Why can't you just do that? Be a good person without the need to be pat on the back or told that you're wonderful or amazing. Try to be somebody or not. Yeah, because with Facebook, that is entirely too easy to do. You share, like, when I was on Facebook, I used to share quotes. It's like, what, you know, and, and then I woke up to that. It's like, wait a minute, it, it's a good quote, and it might apply to my life, or it might have meaning to someone else's life, but it wasn't coming from me. Like, I, I, I want, I, I like original thought, you know. I'm someone who, I, I go for the originality of people, the authenticity of people, not quoting other people, you know, or this, that, and the other. It doesn't make you a philosopher. Um, philosophy, if you can believe that, uh, that's what motivates songs. That's what motivates poetry. Uh, because if you notice, like Tom T. Hall, he's a country music singer, and I love Tom T. Hall. They call him the storyteller. His nickname is the storyteller because every song tells a story, even if it's not true. It's like a, it's like an allegory of reality, which is, it's, it's interesting to listen to a lot of his songs like, um, old dogs, children, and watermelon wine. It's, it's, got, a to it. it's got meaning to it. Um, like faster horses. That's a, a story song. It's a fast song, but it's a story song. Um, the year that Clayton Delaney died. That's another good song. Um, I like beer. 
Sneaky Snake as, as a nursery rhyme. Um, I Love is another one. I Care is another one. Um, Deal is another one. Who's Gonna Feed Them Hogs? That's another good song. It's a funny song. But that's what I'm saying. That, that's all philosophy. Just like, that's... Just like Ray Stevens, a streak. Yeah. That's well, that... Yeah. There, there's a lot of... That's philosophy. People who can come up with their own ideas for things. Like me with my poetry. Like, I don't know if I would consider myself a philosopher, but many people... I think I would. Call me a philosopher. I, I, I don't know. My buddy, who's an actor, and he's a really good friend of mine. He's done amazing work with John Goodman, by the way. He asked me, because I text him every so often, and he says, are you sure you're not a world-renowned poet? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, your, your poetry is really good, man. I love your stuff. I love reading your poetry, and it made me feel good. And I said, well, thank you, you know. He said, you should really have a book of poetry published, and mom even suggested that I have a book of my poetry published. And the reason I haven't is because I feel that the minute I start doing something for money, something I really and truly love, yeah. if I start to do it for money and I don't make money, then I'm going to hate doing it. Right. See what I'm saying? And that's, you know, and that's basically why I loved writing poetry. He's out there barking. Barkley! Shh! Hey! He's scratching. Anyway, I don't mean to shout into the mic, but... The reason that, like, I would write poetry for the Cancer Warriors, I was accused... You guys know this, right? I was accused of writing sex poems. Yeah. Okay, for kids, which is absolute garbage. Yeah. Now, the reason that I would write poems for the kids is because it would make them feel good. You know, like, someone... You know, someone thought of me like that to write a poem about me. Like, they, they think so highly of me that they're writing a poem for me, you know. And it puts a smile on their face. It makes them feel great, you know. But I don't write sex poems, by the way. Not for children. But that's that's kind of like philosophy. Like, you are an inspiration to so many people, including myself, even not just as a child, a cancer survivor, but as a human being. You are an inspiration. I want to write a poem. I'm inspired by you. I would like to write a poem about you. And so I do. And, you know, that that's the, the, the basis behind poetry. you got to be inspired. But I'm not inspired by people who think that the world revolves around them. I'm just not inspired by people like that. We call that narcissism. Tom Mitchell, narcissism. Milk Tyson, nar narcissism. Well, Mark Tyson's just a maggot, but, yeah. He, he, he cares more about himself, like most people. Um, and I'm sure there's many more out there, you know, they, they, they're not, you know, and, and this is like with childhood cancer. We're, we're now in Breast Cancer Awareness Month, okay? And I do understand that, that those of us in the childhood cancer, we have to work twice as hard to get the message out there because they're not promoting childhood cancer in the same way that breast cancer is being promoted and advertised and there's merchandise and, you know, we're not getting the same um, feedback publicly in the public scene, in the public eye. And those of us who are survivors and, and, and we know what we're talking about, we've been through that, like, my dad and, and my mom, we, we talk about try to get the word out, but it doesn't do any good. When I was on Facebook, I was naive and I would, I would post childhood cancer related posts. And I, yes, I say naive because I really and truly thought that I was making a difference. I thought that maybe somewhere along the way I was helping someone. And I'm sure I've, I've, helped a lot of people, a lot of people would read my posts and they would get some kind of good feeling and, and they would, you know, and, and I've had a lot of positive feedback. Oh, Jared, I love reading your posts and, you know, but those were my, those were my real true feelings when I was on Facebook. I was real with people and, and that's where I ran into another huge mistake because Facebook isn't real. And I was trying to be real in a fake environment. And I think that was, it's like a, you know, like a thunderstorm, hot and cold air. I think it was the collision between fake and real. And you would get this huge 
ball of emotions. And But now that, like I said, now that I'm not on Facebook, and I'm not on social media of any kind, uh, if you consider YouTube social media, I guess I'm still on social media. But with YouTube, I can I can pick and choose what I want to see. I can watch any kind of content that I want. I subscribe to a lot of channels. With Facebook, it's here it is, take it or leave it, you don't like it, get the fuck out. And people that I, I've spoken to for years suddenly want to think I'm a bad guy. You know what? Believe whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Just don't care anymore. And now that I'm not on Facebook, I don't have to see that. I don't have to inundate myself with that, worrying about who's going to stay, who's going to leave, because if I'm not there, nobody's leaving. And nobody, I, I don't know who, who's staying or leaving, because I'm not there to see it. So I don't care. Ignorance is bliss. That's the point. And now I can start doing things for me. You know, like, like I can, I, I still write in my journal and I do things for me now. Like if I go and visit somebody, I do it for myself. Uh, I write it in my journal or I talk about it here on YouTube. I do things for me and I, I'm getting my life back and I'm enjoying life as, as best as I can as, to, to the best of my ability and and I write letters to people and email and text message. I stay in touch with a lot of people and I just, I, I, I'm better off without Facebook. And if you're one of those people who's contemplating leaving Facebook, uh, because you, you're just getting sick of Facebook, do it. Get rid of Facebook. Say, you know what? I'm done with this shit. If you guys really and truly want to know where I'm at or how I'm doing, you'll fucking contact me away from Facebook. Get rid of Instagram. Get rid of all your social media stuff. Just say, look, I I'm fucking done. If you really and truly want to know how I'm doing, you'll take the steps to, to contact me. Otherwise, you really weren't my friend to begin with. And I can get on with my life and be happy doing the things that I enjoy. If you're not going to make an attempt, then it's best that you're not in my life. But I have rambled on, and you guys are just sitting over there being... Well, Quiet and letting me, yeah. you're not interrupting me or anything, which <laughs> typically I take issue to, but I usually get some kind of feedback, you know, but not this time. I'm just sitting here doing all the talking and you guys are sitting there. I'm to the place where I buy horse feed. Horse feed? That could be feedback. <laughs> oh. Well, I've been here for over an hour and you guys are just sitting there letting me blab on. Um. There's a lot of good people in the world, but, you know, not everything needs a spotlight. Not everything needs headlines. Not everything needs this. Not everything needs that. But I understand, too, where people say, well, Jared, we have to try to get childhood cancer into the mainstream. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me point this out. Who's Danny Thomas? Who's Danny Thomas? Milo Thomas is Right. What did Danny Thomas do? He's a founder of the... I guess, um, St. Uh, Jude. St. Jude, Jude yeah. Children's Research Hospital. Mm -hmm. For how many years has Danny Thomas been putting out commercials? Oh. How many commercials do you see now of St. Jude? Yeah. I can guarantee you that childhood cancer is not taking a back seat. Not in the way that most people try to put it on Facebook. They try to make it sound as if we're not being seen and heard. Because the funding is so low. Well, that's a government thing, first of all. Second of all, the publicity, you have people like celebrities. Mm -hmm. Danny Thomas was Marlo Thomas's dad. He was putting out commercials for years about St. Jude. Marlo Thomas is carrying on with his legacy. Yep. And now, you, like, you get Shriners Hospitals for Children. You have the young kids who are doing the commercials. The word is out there. You get on Facebook, and you, you distort reality to make yourself look bigger. And it's easy to do. It's easy to do. And if you are gullible enough to fall for the fucking bullshit on Facebook, you're going to believe that. You're going to think, well, seeing is believing, so therefore, 
it must be true. It must really be this horrible. Well, to, to say that, well, because of Milk Tyson that we finally have a platform is a fucking bullshit lie. We have, ha we have been, we, we've had a platform. Maybe not in the way that breast cancer awareness gets a platform, but we have definitely had a platform. Yeah, we, we, we could do a lot better than 4% to uh towards the the funding for research and and to look for care we could do much better than four percent but you got to think too where were we at the time when danny thomas was doing those commercials were we even at the four percent mark we could have been at one percent two percent hey zero percent we could have been at i don't know the percentage uh, uh back in the day i don't know that would be something i'd have to research but to say that we don't have a platform is, is it's not entirely true because we do have a platform. There's commercials. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I, I don't know if you see the, I mean, it's starting to come out, um, you know, the, the more stories about kids fighting cancer. It's starting to come out into, you know, fruition. The, the stories are starting to come up out into the, into the public eye. So we're, we're being heard, like we're, we're, we're noticed, but we're just not, we're not prioritized. You know, like breast cancer awareness. Why? Because it's tits. It's boobs. That's why. And the thing is, is a, an overwhelming majority of the demographic of childhood cancer, we're not celebrities, now, when you go on Facebook, that's easy to do. It's easy for you to perpetuate this this notion that you're some bigwig hotshot, a national activist. No, you're fucking not. In that case, I'm no nationally. And maybe I am. But do I sit and tout about how I'm known nationally? I'm known by people from different countries. Because of Facebook, yes. I'm known... I have friends who live in South Africa that I've met in person. I have friends who live in, in various different states, California, Oklahoma, Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Wisconsin, Indiana, New York, Maryland. I've got family and friends from everywhere, West Virginia. Um, I've got friends and family from all over the place. So if you want to talk about, well, here's... Tom Mitchell's a national activist. Okay, then so am I. So are you. But we're not celebrities. Tom Mitchell's no celebrity. Hey, Milk Tyson's not a celebrity either. But Milk Tyson's not a celebrity. You people bought into this idea that he's a celebrity, that he's a rapper. Okay, he's a rapper, and I'm a fucking astrophysicist. So, um, you guys, wake up. Truly, just, just, just wake the fuck up and realize that you are, you're, you're genuflecting to people who, just because they can preach the gospel of kindness on social media every fucking day. Well, good for them. What do they want, a cookie? Well, I'm not, a, I condemn white supremacists. Well, well, goody, goody for you. I guess you would condemn white supremacists if, you know, you're not a racist. Like, why why do you think that you are so self-important that you got to put that out there? Well, I'm not a white supremacist. I, I condemn white supremacy. Well, good for fucking you. You know what? I also condemn white supremacy. I'm not a racist. I condemn child sex abuse. I condemn abuse of women and children in general. I condemn a lot of different things, but I don't think I'm so special to everybody where I got to go on a social media platform and say, ah, but I condemn this. I am against this. You know what? Nobody gives a flying fuck what you're against or what you condemn. You're not anyone special. Get it in your head. Get it in your head. Whew.
But anyway, you're you're watching my YouTube channels and my videos not because you're being forced, but by choice. I didn't ask you to come and watch my video, but I, I enjoy the viewers, you know, and I have lots of wonderful people reaching out to me uh, daily and, and saying, oh, I love your videos, and how you doing, Jared, and we, we love you and we miss you. We just want to check and see how you're doing, you know, and it's fine. It's fine. You can you can do that. Uh, I don't, I, I, I'll talk with you. You know, I'll respond. I don't think I'm above you or beneath you. If you reach out to me, I'll reach back. Um, maybe not always in a timely fashion, like my cousin Destiny texted me. I could hear the the uh, alert tone from out here. But I will get back with you, Destiny, I promise. I promise I'll respond to your text. But anyway, guys, we have been here for over an hour. An hour and ten minutes. An hour and eleven minutes. I, I got to wrap this up. It is already, I don't know what time it is, I can't see. Oh, it's afternoon. Yeah, I'm going to be here all fucking day. <laughs> Unless I, um, you know. Just let it upload on its own and leave and then. Put, like put the do. music on shuffle and just turn the sound off. So that way the page will stay open. And, and then when it gets so far, you know, if you're gone, we could always say, hey, Jared. And now, and now you don't have to click publish. It automatically publishes to the page. So you don't have to click. Oh, because they've they've upped the ante with YouTube and they changed the, words, a lot Amy? of the features. Any last words, Amy? Peace out. Have a good day. Be safe out there. How about and you, Dad? Especially when you socialize. Yeah. Hey, I got something to say. Remember the people with dementia and Alzheimer's. It's not their fault. They don't understand. So be gentle with them. Take care of them. All right. Later. And that's from Dad and Amy. And I'm going to leave you with these final words. You know, there's there's videos. There's a, And there are moments when I do really come off as hostile in my videos. And I'm, I, I don't bullshit. I don't fuck around. But one thing I will say, what, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, sincerely, I really and truly care about people. I don't like to see people hurt. I don't like to see people being taken advantage of. And I definitely, it definitely breaks my heart to see children suffer in the way that I've had to suffer. And, and, and to have people tell me that I have no business feeling the way I feel or that I shouldn't feel the way I feel. It's not for you to tell me how I should think and feel. I've lived through things, rather, regardless of the fact that I can't remember a lot of it or any of it, it, it makes not one iota of difference because whatever was going on then, I'm still feeling today. Yeah. And I went through my, I, I had the checkups preceding, you know, following the cancer battle. I remember my checkups. The scans is what we call them nowadays. I remember those. Those are tied in corroboration with my cancer battle, what I've already went through. And today I'm talking about my cancer battle, and I'll perhaps maybe I'll talk about my cancer battle to other people until the day I fucking die, which is fine. Until I can't speak anymore, I will speak about child cancer, to, especially to other people. If not, you'll write it down and show it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but I genuinely give a shit about other people. I don't like to see people hurt. I don't like to see other people being taken advantage of. I don't like to see bad things happen to good people. And yes, I talk about certain individuals in my Sunday videos, and there's a lot of people who don't like it. That they, they, they squirm. They're uncomfortable. But you know what? Sometimes the truth makes people uncomfortable. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I don't come on here every week saying that I'm, I'm Mr. Wonderful or I'm Mr. Perfect and I never do wrong. That's not the case at all. I'm far from perfect. I am far from perfect. I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. Who hasn't? Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But something when something is obvious and something needs to be worked on, I'm still working on myself too. There's a lot of things about myself that I'm trying so hard to change. I recognize there is a problem, and I, instead of... Running from it, I try to overcome it. 
there's people, you know, it's constructive criticism. It's, there's a difference between constructive criticism and just being a, a, a straight up dickhead. Okay. I've taken a lot of constructive criticism. And I don't, I don't take it as well. How dare you tell me what I have to do or what I, what it is, is my friends are saying, you, you kind of need to, you know, because these are my friends who actually give a fuck to tell me these things. If I don't spot the obvious, they do. And they're nice enough to pull, kind of pull me to the side, so to speak, and say, Jared, you know, we love you and, and you're an awesome friend, but this is what you got to work on. Try to change this a little bit or try not to focus so much on this. Try to work on something else. And and I, I appreciate that. And I'm I'm every day I'm trying so hard. Like, I can go to sleep at night, wake up refreshed the next morning, and not think about the things that bothered me. Like, it doesn't even hit me. Not, not, not right away. Like, I wake up refreshed and relaxed, and I'm ready to go. I don't think about yesterday's problems. I, it's like I'm a new person. Like, I got a good night's sleep. I feel refreshed. I feel amazing. I, I just want to get up and go. So... There, there's a lot about myself that I need to work on, and I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna bullshit anybody. There's a lot about me that I need to work on. I'm not perfect, okay. But when, but there are other issues that really and truly bother me. When my friends are showing other people, just willfully giving other people the attention that I have to work so hard to try to get myself, and I'm not supposed to, you know have anything to say about that but the the fact of the matter is is that i actually genuinely truly give a shit about other people and i can you know i can come off hostile i i can come off being sharp and engaging in name calling and and pejoratives and all that good stuff but at the end of the day i genuinely give a shit about people and i don't like to see people hurt and when someone out there is taking advantage of people preying on their vulnerability and and gullibility and their weakness, bet your fucking ass I'm going to speak up and say something. Bet your bottom dollar that Jer Bear is not going to shut up about that. So you might as well get used to that. And I'll end it on that note. Thanks for watching another installment of the Sunday video update. I love you all. I'll be here next week, which next week is the 11th. October 11th. Much love, guys. Take care. Peace out. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and um, just be safe and stay healthy. Bye.